Hello, hello. Today I'm going to be reviewing the VK3001D. D stands for Daimler, because this was a Daimler-Benz prototype tank that never saw action. It uh, was a prototype, and it lost out to the Man Corporation. So, looking at where this guy sits in the tech tree, not the research tree, the to get to this guy, you gotta go through the Panzer 3-4, and then from the Panzer 3, or the VK 2001D. I went through the Panzer 3, and then it moves on to the VK 3002D, and then on to the Indian Panzer, and on to the Leopard tanks. But this is the tank we're looking at today. So we'll look at the hit points. 770 hit points is pretty good. If you look at some other tier 6 tanks it's got a fair bit more hit points because because it does I don't know why it just does weight 33 tons pretty good engine when you have the top one about 700 horsepower so this thing trucks along at a really really good pace 56 kilometers per hour with a pretty decent traverse of 38 so you can like blast around corners and climb hills and do just about everything you need to do in this guy. And that's all possible because it has crappy armor. Well, if you angle it pretty good, sometimes it can be okay, but I've had shots go in right through here on the gun matlet. So best not to get shot at. Not to get shot at at all, really. The, uh, the gun depression isn't so hot either. You can't really go over the top of hills too well. You can look down a little bit, but it's not great. The gun is your run-of-the-mill L70 gun, which is this guy right here. You got almost 14 rounds per minute, 150 pen, 135 damage, 0.35 accessory, and 2.3 aiming time. This gun is like the mainstay staple of tier 5 and tier 6 tanks. And you can even use it on the Panther at tier 7, which you would never want to do. So, the gun, pretty good gun for tier 6. It's, it's quite accurate, has enough penetration to pierce most stuff, and if you're going to be shooting some Prem shells, 200 pens, pretty good for that. So, I think the, the main thing I like about this tank is mostly its gun. And it's speed. I don't really care for the, the armor coefficient. It's kind of like the Panzer 3-4. The Panzer 3-4 has sloped armor, but it's not really thick enough to really bounce too much of the high caliber stuff. So the turret traverse is 32, which is not bad. It's better than some other tanks with the small turvy looking turrets that only turn into like the mid-24s, like the Panzer 4S. The view range is 370, which is okay. It's kind of a little bit low. Could be better, maybe. If Because you could play this tank as a scout tank if, if, if you wanted, probably, because of how fast it is. And the maneuverability is good. But view range is kind of average. It could maybe be a little bit higher, but it's not. 710 signal range is good. They have good German videos in here. And... Taking a look at what I've thrown on this tank, I put on the Christie suspension, so I don't get tracked as much, and I put on the gun rammer, so I load faster. I mostly put this on so I could bypass having to research the tracks, and I could put the turret on first, and then get the gun, because I already had the gun unlocked, because I'd had it unlocked on the multiple other VK tanks that I had. So that's kind of way I bypassed doing... Uh, this amount of tracks here, and I just haven't bothered taking them off. I might do the same thing on the next tank down the line, the next VK3002, just so I don't have to deal with unlocking and spending like eight to 12,000 experience on tracks, which really, I don't know, it's just kind of like a blocker, so you can't put anything useful on your tank, and it gives you a tiny bit of traverse speed. So that's kind of how I bypass that a little bit. If I didn't have the suspension on now, I'd probably put uh, the gun lag drive so I could aim a bit quicker. And then I usually go in between from dumping my toolbox on here or my bino telescope. 
because I, I like to snipe with this guy. It's it's accurate enough, and you can load prim shells if you need to, and you can penetrate most guys pretty good. <clears throat> I carry about 40 AP rounds, 15 AP CR rounds in case I get into like a really big tier 8 match, and 5 HE shells for the Hellcats and Autes, and just regular stuff for the stuff at the end. And this is one of my most long-standing crews that keeps getting transferred around all pretty much of my VK and uh, Panzer tanks. And because I keep having to retrain them, uh, <laughs> they never seem to get to 100%. They get close and then they, they get transferred to another tank. Uh, these guys will probably get put into the next VK down the line in Tier 7. And then I think I'm going to buy the the mini, the Baby Panther, the the, the new VK3002M. So I'll find a crew to put in that. So for this tank, I would have six cents, but I don't have it quite yet. And I took Snapshot because you kind of need to shoot in the move sometimes or not be fully aimed to make sure you can kind of hit a little bit and your turret moving around. And off-road driving because this tank's fast and I don't want it to slow down when it's driving on dirt and mud. And uh, I took situational awareness so I can see about 10 meters further because it only adds about 3% when this is at 100%. So it's a bit, it lets me see maybe like 385, I think, around there. Maybe 390 if I'm lucky. And I took camouflage just so they don't get seen too much. These This crew, um, it's going to get dumped on so many different tanks. It's kind of hard to, to read justice for what like what tank you're driving all the time. So sometimes I just kind of like, this stuff is going to be good for all the tanks going through the, the line that I'm going through because I want to try and get to the Leopard 1. So yeah, they are who they are. And looking at everything else, there's three radios. There's only two sets of tracks. There's three engines. There's two turrets. The main turret being... Pretty much the Panzer 3-4's turret, which is makes this tank god awful because then you have to use the L48 gun and you get obliterated when you use this gun against tier eight, tier seven tanks. It's just not good enough. So it's really great once you get the turret. So buy these Christie tracks, get the turret. If you already have the gun, great. If not, get the gun. And then once you get the gun and the turret, you're pretty much good because everything else just kind of falls in line after that. And the tank's not bad tank. I like this guy because it's fast. It's kind of like it's kind of like the the Cromwell with a better gun. That's kind of how I think about it, because it's got better accuracy, it's got better penetration, and it's got I don't know, probably a little bit less damage. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's just got crappy gun depression. So gonna show you some replays and see what you think. All right, we're on Ensk here, and I'm running an 8.6 res mod something or other to make this replay work in 8.8 .8 from 8.7 and I can't make it go into the sniper mode so you're going to have to watch this replay in external cam so it's just the way it is plus my sounds don't seem to be working either except for that me running into that building there that works but when I shoot it doesn't make sound <laughs> but at least you can see the replay so it's not the end of the world So I'm just going to back up here a little bit, go over a little bit. This part is a little bit boring. So I spot a Hetzer, blow the truck up. Ooh, and I see an M6. Yeah, the beginning of this match was a little bit boring. So it's time to move up. A lot of their team hasn't uh, moved to the other flank. They're mostly in the city. So I'm just sitting here and I spy the looks and I shoot and I miss. Penetration. Don't miss the Hetzer. He shoots and misses me. Enemy vehicle destroyed. They killed our driver. So I should take him out, but then I get shot by the SU. And as you can see. Shot went right through my thickest armor. Slope right front. So 144 penetration from that tank. 
will penetrate this tank 60 armor in the front pretty easy. I decide I'm going to pile in behind the, the KV-1 and drive down the middle of the map. Since I've now healed my driver. My driver has been hailed! And spot a T-28. And luckily I shoot and miss. Enemy armor is damaged. I don't miss that shot. So Got kill him. And then I'm shooting over the top of the deck of the KV-1, which is awesome. This is the best way to play this tank. Just follow KV-1 around and shoot over to the back hump. So I set him on fire. I'm just going to keep shooting him. And eventually he bites the dust. And right here I can see bad things happen because they wiped out our team on the other side. So I decided to go all the way back to the base. Because the Lux is killing our artillery. And there's a Ram 2, a T14, and a Lux. A Deluxe Lux. So I pull about halfway back to the base, and I decide I'm going to pre aim to the left here and try and shoot this guy as he comes by. Get a lucky shot on him, take him out. And then the Ram stops right in front of me, so I'll shoot him. And the T14 drives by, and he's got space arm on the side, so that shot bounced. So instead of driving up the, the way they expect me to right there, I'm going to come up the other way. And luckily enough in my team, no one else likes defender points. No one else is coming back. So for us to reset, it's going to be on me and maybe that little baby Stuart, but he has no health. So I just drive up here. And plug the ram. They're knocked out. Take him out. Wait for my gun to reload. Enemy is hit. <laughs> Shoot the T14. Enemy armor is I'm hit. shooting prems rounds now because I don't feel like losing. Penetration. And for some reason he's like, I'm going to shoot the Stuart instead of the guy. He could penetrate me pretty easily, especially if he switched over to prem rounds, but maybe Enemy he doesn't know what he's doing. Damaged. All right. So we managed a five kill game there and came back, defended the base against three. Well, there was a tier four and two tier five tanks. One of them was a heavy tank. And this tank performed pretty good. Did not do too bad there. So I will jump on to the next replay. Cool, so this is a battle I had on steps, and I'm coming over here, and I spot a 5916 plowing across the map, and luckily my aim sucks, so I miss him with a couple shots. I think one of these I eventually hit him. <laughs> Not that one. Maybe the next one. Enemy armor yeah! <laughs> the one where he's farthest away is the one I get. So we have pretty decent uh, amount of dudes coming over this way. So it's worth getting over this ridge. So I'm going to pile up here as close as I can. Peek over the corner. No one's there. Oh, but there is someone there now. There's a Hellcat who thinks he got into stealth cover. But there was no stealth cover. There was only L70 shells hitting his tank. So, managed to take the Hellcat out. Great result. And now their artillery is shooting at me. All two of them. <laughs> so I've got to keep driving. You can't stop. Panzer IV drives in the open. Stops. Stops again. Dead. Accuracy on this gun is pretty good when you can shoot straight. Ignore when I was shooting at that tank before that that wasn't happening. 
So this flank looks like it's fairly weak. So I spot an air LV-39 and his armor sucks. Enemy is hit. So I'm going to pump some rounds into him. He does a fairly nasty gun, so I don't want to get hit by him. I'm going to try and conserve my hit points for when the left flank eventually does implode, which it looks like it probably will because they have more tanks over there. So I'm just going to keep shooting at this guy. And I miss a couple shots there. As you can see, it. Haha! We're back after my replay hitting the button snafu, which broke the camera and made me hurt to start again. So I spot a KV-1S and I want to shoot him as much as I can because he's a dangerous tank. Enemy is hit. That shot goes in. This gun has enough penetration to penetrate his turret pretty easy. So I'm going to back up here and see if I can get some shots at this VK. Yes. Shots on him work. And I can see the, the Jumbo's got his butt sticking out. He's got his booty sticking out right there. I missed the first shot. They're Second shot is a miss. And the shot can penetrate the side with Jumbo really easy. From the front, probably not so much. So I can see that they've got a bunch of tanks piled into the back here. And I want them to die. And they're dead. And we're losing right now. So we spy the KV-1S. Enemy armor is damaged. Put a shot into him and he starts falling back a little bit. And there's a 59-16 coming around behind us. But I'm pretty sure I just ignored him at this point. Because he's his gun is pretty... Well, it depends on which gun he's using, but it's not the most powerful gun in the world. But he's hanging back. He doesn't want to help his team. He could be capping or doing something useful right now. But no, he doesn't want to do that. So we'll come around the KV-1S. I'm not sure what he was doing. He didn't have the, the top 122mm gun in the end. So kind of weak play by him. He could have done something a little bit more than just sit in that ravine. So he's dead, but now there's two uh, the tier 6 tank and a tier 7 tank. There's an IS and a Jackson coming around the corner here. So I drive up, and I know our guys are capping, so I want to try and take these guys out if I can. So I drive up and pop IS. Whoa! <laughs> happens to be another tier 7 tank over here, so now I've got two. But I'm on pretty good health here, so I'm going to take some chances, and I'm going to try and pop him with a shot. And he shoots and misses. But I'm going to try and disappear for a little bit here. Let him think that, oh, I might run away or whatever. So I'm going to pop around the corner, see if I can spot him. And he is halfway behind the wreck, so I'm going to pull up a little bit. And my gun depression is good enough that I can bounce. So he shoots and misses. So there's a bit of a reload time for him. So it's time to shoot him in the buttocks. And I got some shots to the Jackson, so I'm going to take him. I can pen it to the Jackson really easy Enemy with this guy, too. So the T21 bites the dust. Jackson bites the dust. So really now all there is is an M4 and a Tier 6 scout tank. And I'm still on half health. Our guy's telling me to go... Cap, reset, something or other... The game's pretty much over at this point. We have more guys in the cap than they do. So we're at 100%. They're only going to get to about 93 or 94, and they're not going to be able to do it. So we ended up winning that game, and another good kill result. Uh, I probably could have killed the T29 as well, but I wanted to get shots in on the Jackson because the Jackson was in an elevated position firing down into our cap circle, so I wanted to prevent him from resetting. And it ended up working. So what I think I, I did right in that battle was um, I came and I tried to protect our guys that were capping over in this area here from the two heavy tanks that were coming and the Jackson. What I did crappily was miss a whole bunch of shots in that 5916 who ended up being like right here near the end. If I would have pegged him with a couple more shots, that would have been better.
But all in all, good result. The mobility of the tank's good, the accuracy is good, the alpha damage is a little bit low, and the gun depression is a little bit lacking. But overall, this tank's pretty fun to drive. Cool, so this is a battle I had on steps, and this was a rock and sock and battle. This was a pretty good fight. At the beginning, it was a little bit boring. There was a, a Panzer NA that had driven up here. He was scouting for us, and he did a pretty good job. I was hoping he wasn't going to lemming, but he actually got up to that tree line right up here and was able to scout their tanks pretty good. And this is an 8.8 .8 replay, so I'm actually able to go into into sniper view and not have it blow up my, my camera. So you'll be able to enjoy the beautiful vistas of sniper cam. But for some reason it did reset uh, so I, you can't see which tank is what. Which I don't know why it did. I don't know why it did that. So we managed to peg that guy. Don't get the kill, but it was only a Panzer 38 NA anyway. So it looks like this left flank is fairly weak at this point, and the best shots I have right now are the shots across the map into the middle. But they're pretty far away, so it's more worth just going and clearing out this flank and then cutting across into the side. And we can spot a Tog coming over the hill here, you can see him. Gonna take out this VK first though, but he's on pretty high health. So we're gonna need to whittle him down. The side of the turret on the new VK, the baby panther I'm just gonna call it, isn't that strong. So I was able to penetrate him really easy. And that shot bounced into the dirt, that kinda sucked. So now I take more aim shots. Aim shots are better. Just gonna get up onto some high ground here because my gun depression is not fantastico. And he goes into stealth mode about 200 meters from my tank because that's really awesome. So this is where the tog is gonna get wasted because he's getting shot by three different tanks. So, as you can see, the uh, the VK 3000 and M is uh, kill stealing like a boss here. <laughs> he did have a pretty good game, but um, he was shooting at all the same tanks I was shooting at. That was him right there. And I had a shot at... This is a Churchill from pretty long range. Not worth taking too many more shots with that, so... I can tell right now that the, the game's close, we're actually losing, and we've lost our KV-1S, our M6, and our KV-1. We don't have any heavy tanks left, and they have four heavy tanks left. So this is going to be close. Uh, I know there was a tank to the left here, so I'm going to pull up over the ridge. And I'm not exactly sure what he was doing, but he tried to shoot him in his gas tanks, and... Wait, wait, VK didn't get the... Baby Panther didn't get to steal that kill. That was good. So we're coming over the hill here, and there is a M4. So I'm going to try and get rid of him first. He's concentrating on the, the other VK, because he's got lower health. And that shot hit me somewhere and bounced, I think. And that leaves the BDR who just smashed the VK in the mouth. So he had a pretty good game. But not good enough. Enemy is hit. So that shot there killed his commander. You can see it in the, the battle results screen. So I was taking as many cheap shots as I could without exposing any of my tank there. So you can see that it's still pretty pretty tight here. They've got all their good tanks left. And I bounce a shot. 
And I don't know what this BDR was aiming at or shooting at, but he should have been aiming at me. And from what I can figure, I figure the Hellcat is on that hill in the back. So I'm going to drop back to the, the back part of the cap circle here and I'm going to have another driving fail. <laughs> but first, I'm going to shoot the KV-1S on the hill. I managed to plug him for quite a lot of damage. And that ended up turning out pretty good. So now it's just me and the SU and their Hellcat and their VKH. And this M6. Do you see him? He's blocking me. He's blocking me twice. I'm going to have to report him for unfair play. And then he pops up out of nowhere. I'm going to drop back behind the M6. I probably could have shot over the, maybe the hull of that, but... Ended up able to out DPM him. And now he's dead. So now it's just their Hellcat and me and the SU. And the SU's way in the back. So... I'm going to try and make his shots <clears throat> as useful as possible by pulling back as far as I can so he can give me better cover fire. And I figure the Hellcat is going to come in from the right, which he is, so I re-angle my tank to put my armor to the front. And I'm not sure where that shot went. It must have hit a piece of wood or a house or some something stupid over there. So I have full hit points at this point, even if I take two shots from the Hellcat, I figure I can probably take this guy. Especially now that I'm able to pump a shot into him. He's down to 75% health. I kneel him again. And at this point now the SU's like, okay, I'm gonna come down. I'm just not, uh... Busy kill stealing the rest of my guys, I guess. So I'm gonna try and finish this guy. And... Get him to pop on the corner, and then he jukes, and he goes back. And I missed that shot, which kind of sucked. But I track him and put him in place there. But, yeah. <laughs> I ended up losing quite a lot of kills that game to other people, because I missed shot by a little bit, or I was just a second too late, or... Because I, I probably could have killed, like... I don't know, probably five or six tanks, but I lost some to the VK and I lost some to the SU-100, but in the end we ended up winning, and that was my Ace Mastery game, and I think I did close to 3,000 or more damage in that game. That was a pretty good game for me. So, looking at this tank, I actually quite like it a lot. I don't know if I like it more than my Cromwell, because it's not quite as fast, but the armor is a little bit more bouncy. I like the gun better. It's a little bit more accurate. The penetration is a little bit better. The alpha damage is just about as crappy. But it's fast. It turns really well. You can kind of treat it like a scout tank. And uh, for the most part, it's a lot of fun to drive. I was kind of scared of, um, of this tank. There's another tank that that leads on to the Elf Panther that's below this one. And the VK something something or other. 2801, or I can't remember what it's called, but it, uh, I'm pretty certain it didn't get the L70 gun, or it had some, some derp guns or something else, but I'm going to avoid that tank line like the plague. I'm not going to go through that way. Uh, I like how this tank drives. I don't really know if there's too many weak things about it. In tier 7 games, it does okay. In tier 8 games, it, uh, <laughs> you gotta be more in the back. But for the most part, I like this guy. The The weak points are pretty much just his gun depression, and it doesn't have the best armor, but at least it's sloping on this tank, unlike the Cromwell. It's not quite as fast as the Cromwell. But as far as the, the mobile medium tanks go uh, in Tier 6, this tank is actually quite a lot of fun to drive. And I would recommend going down this line as opposed to the Awful Panther line to, to get to the Indian Panzer and on to the, the Leopard prototype and the Leopard 1, which is eventually where I'd like to go. It's kind of like my, my goal, my idle tank. Because I'm finding the further I get down into the, the Tiger line, the less I'm really liking driving too many heavy tanks. I just, I don't really like being so slow. 
and not being able to react to situations and stuff. So this tank, good tank, recommend it. And that's going to conclude this video replay of the VK3001D. Not sure that D stands for Daimler Benz, I'm assuming. But uh, if you like the replay and you'd like to see more, you can hit the subscribe button and you'll get a bunch more replays from me soon. And it would also help me out if you hit like too. So I will conclude this video and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.